Howdy folks, Colin and Shreya Lay here of Lay Roots. Lay Roots is a awesome, amazing asset protection law firm where we help protect people from stupid lawsuits. Shreya Lay, I wrote a little bloggity post here. It is story time. Common question we get. Sure. How can I protect my property from creditors? Yeah. And by property, we're talking about real estate here. Yes. But Shreya Lay, before we get into that, if you have questions about protecting your assets, getting your asset protection plan in place, please go to livemorecarefree.com. <laughs> Schedule a free initial chat with this young lady here. Mm -hmm. That is livemorecarefree.com. Looking forward to talking to you. Shreya Lay, so. Yes, Colin. Protecting property. Yes. It's a hot topic. It is. People want to do it. Sure. I mean, you're living your life. You're working hard. You bought a home. You're working hard to pay off that debt because you don't want that mortgage hanging over your head. And now you're just sitting on a big equity pile. Home prices are going through the roof. Yeah. We're trying to buy a house recently. Yeah. Can't keep up. People are just throwing out money. <laughs> they are. Houses. They're like, Psh that that zestimate <laughs> normally a joke as overvalued is quite undervalued these days yeah and especially if you're in the pacific northwest so basically people are sitting on this pot of gold mm -hmm. and they don't want to lose it so many ways to protect a property yeah that's great we can't talk about them all no many different ways to skin a cat but we can you say. know talk about some high level strategies for people to think high. about High-level strategies. Yeah. Making your property unattractive to creditors. That is the name of the game in asset protection. And Shreya always wears, gives me a hard time for making <laughs> our property unattractive because there's so much storage space outside. Sometimes you just no. you put things on the side of the house, <laughs> no. out of the way. Yeah, an and old those, washing machine tub, let's say. Yeah. That those, you plan to turn into an outdoor fire pit. Yes. So we're not talking about making your property unattractive in that way. No. We're making it so that a creditor doesn't want to take it, makes it harder for them to take it, mm -hmm. makes it unattractive because there's no equity. So if a creditor was going to take your property, they would have to you know, get a judgment against you, attach a lien, arrange for kick you out of the house, arrange for an auction. It's a lot of work. Eventually the house gets sold and then they get basically any money that's left over after like existing creditors are paid. Correct. That's the kind of basics of it. So yeah. And so we do like to remind people that before it gets to that point, there's a lot of work that needs to be done on their behalf, yeah. but that doesn't mean that they don't want it. Right. Yeah, real estate in general is not the hottest asset that creditors right. want. They want those liquid assets. Mm -hmm. You know, they want that money in the bank that they could just take and put in their own bank. Yeah. So it is harder to turn a home into something in their bank account. So how would you do that? Sure. How do you protect that? First step, get some insurance. Yeah, right? get some insurance. Yeah. Is that what I wrote about? No. It is? Oh, yeah, it is. Make sure you have the right kinds of insurance yeah. in place. Yeah. Um, That's just the, yeah, I guess the general recommendation on anything. Yeah. Make sure you have the right insurance. But the next thing was to utilize your state homestead exemption. Shayla, tell them what that yes. means. You got great things to say. Yeah, Share it is. Share the world. Um, <laughs> thanks. So every state has a different homestead exemption. This means that... Um, the state wants you to keep your house. They want you to keep a certain amount of your house. They don't want you to lose this primary residence. So they will protect a certain amount of that home that you call a primary residence. In Florida and in Texas, it's the whole house. It doesn't Unlimited. matter. Unlimited. Unlimited. the limit. And, you know, not disparaging Texas because my parents live there. I have a lot of friends there. But it does mean that you have to leave your current place that you live and move there to get it. And so it's not the right fit for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when I tell people they have to move to Florida, they're <laughs> like, hmm. They're like, maybe not. 
They're like, oh, I thought I could just buy a house there and then just like keep it. And it's like, no, you yeah. can't. So some states protect a lot. Most states don't. Yeah. It's a varying amount. Washington's like 125000 but go somewhere like, I think like Wyoming's like 10000 bucks or something. I don't right. know. They like passed these laws back when you could buy a house for, you know, 20000 bucks. Right. They're a little outdated, but that's one way to protect your property is with utilizing homestead exemption. Mm-hmm. Maybe live in somewhere where they provide more protection than other states. Uh, the next way to make your house less attractive to creditors is to reduce that equity. Like I said, equity converts to cash eventually once it's sold. So if there's less equity or if there appears to be less equity, then a creditor would be, or or potential creditor would be less interested in pursuing a lawsuit, perhaps entirely, if they were to search and your property said, oh, there's this mortgage holder and then this second mortgage and then what we call a home equity line of credit. Mm-hmm. That's when you borrow from a bank um, against the value of your equity. Right. And, and, and people do this for a number of reasons. Maybe you buy another property. Maybe you want to do some improvements on the home. There's all sorts of reasons. Yeah. And that is a, a common technique then to reduce yeah. equity. But it really varies over time, basically depending on interest rates because... Mm-hmm. If you have to borrow at a high interest rate to do this, it's not very attractive. But, you know, a few years ago when people were borrowing at, you know, 2%, whatever, Mm -hmm. then it was like a cool option. Some people would borrow it and then go invest it Mm -hmm. in, you know, YOLO meme stocks (laughs) and just make all kinds of money. Yeah, make make money on the spread. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So that is a second way, Mm -hmm. second common way. To make your house ugly for creditors. Um, what did I write? What's the, the last one? The last one is a Ooh. protective entity. This yes. is one of our favorites. I can't believe we forgot, Colin. Best for last. Yeah. Put in an asset protection trust. Yeah. Jeez. That trust lets you preserve all the benefits of home ownership, mm-hmm. like tax deductions, interest, whatevers. Mm-hmm. Those are protected. Home you get your homestead stays. exemption. Yeah, you can. Trans- you can still do something like a HELOC when the time is right. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, but in addition to all of that, you also get this protective entity that makes it less attractive. If you did get a judgment against you, that lien cannot be automatically attached to mm. that property. Big Another bonus. benefit. Um, yeah, so many benefits. We've helped save a lot of homes. We have. We're so proud. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks, Shreya. Thanks, Colin. Thank you for discussing this blog post that we have now turned into a video for viewing. All the content. <laughs> thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, do us a solid. Hit that like button that's down there. Maybe check out some of these other ah. videos that we got. <laughs> Shay's got Sorry, a, friends. Shay's got an appointment to go to. Consider subscribing over there on the other side. Mm-hmm. See you next time. <laughs>